Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now these days the gaming performance difference between Intel's lineup of Core 2 quad processors is negligible with most Socket 775 CPUs choking under the pressure of modern AAA titles. That doesn't mean these chips are totally incapable and they're still just as fun to play around with. Checking in with the Core 2 quad series of processors from time to time just feels like a tradition now. Their existence paved the way for many PC gamers' memory lane stories, and I've no doubt plenty of enthusiasts' overclocking experiences started right here too. Despite this, I bet the Q9505 is a name that not many of you are familiar with. Even in 2009, it didn't exactly excite consumers, and 10 years on, you'll still have to do some serious online digging to find a single official review. The Q9505 just filled a gap that didn't really need filling. It's a practice that still occurs today, not just with processors, but with graphics cards as well. Essentially, this little unloved quad core was a cut down Q9550. That chip had four cores, a 2.83 GHz stop clock speed, and a sensible 95W TDP. The Q9505 had four cores, a 2.83 GHz clock speed, and a sensible 95W TDP. Hang on a minute. I know there was about a year and a half difference in release dates, but back in late 2009 I'd be suffering from a serious case of deja vu if I saw the 9505 pop up on the shelf. So really, what's the difference? Well, the 9505 had just 6MB of L2 cache compared to 12 on the original. By the time it released in Q309 at $213, the OG Q9550 was only about $10 US dollars more at certain retailers. That's $10 for 6 megabytes of L2 cache that would have actually made a difference in some programs. Of course over time the prices of both continued to drop and those on a tighter budget could pick up the Q9505 which would still offer a great computing experience. In hindsight I guess it did have its own special spot on the market after all, it just took a while. These days both chips can be found on the used market for a fraction of their original retail price and interestingly a small price gap still exists between the two. But now, I want to look back at the Q9505's gaming performance to see what it can do with a few modern AAA games. So I had planned on testing it with the RX 5700, but every single 775 motherboard I tried the graphics card with refused to display a picture. Whether that's a known incompatibility or not is yet to be confirmed. Instead, I paired the Q9505 with this GTX 680 Super Overclocked card, which in 2019 offers GTX 1050 Ti-like performance. That or this is probably as high as I'd recommend going as far as the GPU is concerned, as the CPU will already be the limiting factor a lot of the time. Adding more graphical power just would not help at all, and it's very unlikely you'd pair a Core 2 Quad with a modern card like the RX 5700 anyway. Actually, that whole graphics card thing may not be entirely true, because in Dirt 2, the game is actually more GPU intensive, so it doesn't max out the processor's power, and you might actually see a higher frame rate with a more powerful graphics card here. It's just not worth it for the vast majority of games. I jumped straight in at high settings at 1080p and was surprisingly able to maintain a 30fps average. It looks a lot better than the Far Cry 2 style smooth and muddy textures that the ultra low preset offers, but you will see a very impressive frame rate when disabling pretty much everything. The best solution here for 60fps is medium. We didn't really have much room for manoeuvre in Far Cry New Dawn, with the lowest settings and no anti-aliasing just about netting us a 30fps average. You can see here that the Q9505, that is a mouthful every time I say it, was running at around 90-100% to load, so a more powerful graphics card would not help you out. The percentile figures likely have something to do with the big freeze I experienced during the benchmark run. The game got stuck during what I presumed was going to lead to an imminent crash, but the benchmark carried on after this little incident. Now I absolutely love Kingdom Come Deliverance, and if you told me when it first came out that I'd be playing it on a Core 2 Quad, I'd probably laugh, but over time it's seen some serious performance improvements. Perhaps jumping in at medium settings here was a little too much for the processor though. The constant frame drops made it pretty much unplayable. I'm using 8 gigs of RAM here as well, just in case any of you were wondering. The low settings with all anti-aliasing and other fancy features turned off meant a 30fps average, which I was quite surprised by, but again, you'll notice how the processor is maxing out even when nothing is really going on on screen. 1 and 0.1% lows of 11 and 2 
don't do much to solidify this experience. PUBG was also quite stuttery. The high settings were my first choice. Maybe not the wisest decision, but I think things weren't as bad as they could have been. We still saw at least 30 frames per second on average, so that's something to celebrate. It was very juddery though. I then turned things all the way down to low to see how close to 60 frames per second we could get. It turns out that anywhere from 40 to 50 was a more realistic expectation, but this wasn't without issues as well. It was certainly more than playable though, if I'm honest. Now you've probably heard me moan about Rage 2 on more than one occasion, it just does not work on some systems and Core 2 quads are among the CPUs it does not like. That said, the game starts up just fine, but soon crashes. I tried it on a few Core 2 quads and the same thing occurred. I then applied a fix I found on a Steam forum which replaces the .exe file with a tweaked one, and while this let me get a bit further in to the continue game screen, it still crashed to the desktop shortly after. I guess even in 2019 there will still be a few games that run fine on the Core 2 Quad lineup, for example Dirt Rally 2.0. Most of the time though, well, you may find yourself struggling to maintain a solid 60 or even 30 FPS if we're being more realistic. As I say though, there are some titles out there that will have no problem with the four cores of these older chips, and it's worth bearing in mind that you probably won't be tackling any titles like Metro Exodus either. With all that said and done, well I hope you've enjoyed a look back at the Q9505 here, a chip that can actually be quite elusive on some used markets. In fact, if you want one of these, then the Q9550 would probably be the one to go for, though that itself would perform pretty much identically these days, as would a lot of the Core 2 Quad CPUs. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know in the comments if you've ever owned one of these and how it performed for you and what you thought of it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.